What's up guys, it's boy Just with another X-Men Month review. Today we're reviewing X-Force Assault on Grey Malkin. Which is written by Fabi Fabian Nietzsche. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. If somebody knows, let me know, but I, I honestly don't really care. <laughs> uh, with art by uh, Greg Capullo from Spawn. And you have um, Derek Robertson from The Boys, who did the art for New Warriors 31. But yeah, this 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 starts off with New Warriors 31, and continues with X Force issues 19 through 25. This is th th these are comics from from 19 uh, sorry 1993. This was first printed in 2011, by the way. So yeah, if you have the first. X Force Epic Collection. This is good to have, unless they made a second one. Then, then this would be a complete waste of money. So yeah, it starts off with New Warriors Twenty Five, where um, Cannonball Warpath go on uh, go on an adventure with Firestar to find Amara and her people in Nova Roma, which I totally forgot that Amara was from. Like that, like. Roman city in the in the Amazon. I totally forgot about that. Was you by right away? You could tell this is by Derek Robertson, dude, with the faces. Which dude, the guy did not evolve as an artist at all in the last like 30, 30 years, dude. His art looks pretty much the same, dude. Oh my god. Which by the way, I kind of I didn't like this comic book at all because they retcon the. Uh, they retcon the Nova Roma, which maybe Chris Claremont, because Chris Claremont, like, created Nova Roma, or at least some, somebody, I don't know if it was him, but, like, yeah, uh, they, they retcon it, so it was like, oh, it was all a trick from the uh, Selene, they were all kidnapped people, oh my god, so yeah, there's gonna be spoilers in this, by the way. So if you don't want to get spoiled, you know, it's like, don't, uh, the rating is going to be in the description. So yeah, the story for this graphic novel is basically X-Force, um, C Cable dies, but he's not really dead. He's lost in the time stream. He comes back in the last issue. But yeah, X-Force dies and Sam Goofy Cannonball from the New Mutants is now the leader of X-Force and he was a way better leader here than he was in that New Mutants graphic novel we reviewed. Like he was, like there was actually, there was no leader in that graphic novel by the way. It was like basically like they were left to their own devices. Uh, and like magic was like manipulating things from the, behind the scenes. Yeah, but basically the New Mutants are outlaws and the, uh, uh, so, they're st like they're on house arrest in Xavier's mansion, and like the Xavier, like you know, Sam's like, let us go so we can do our own thing, dude. And they're like, okay. You also have this B plot with Domino's. Domino recruits Grizzly to go and find uh, this shapeshifter girl, which has like no bearings on the main plot. And also, the main story here is basically Gray Malkin, which is Cyclops. Sorry, not Cyclops. Cable's futuristic space station somehow appears on orbit and and uh, Nick Fury and a team of shield shield uh, agents go in there and it was fir first it was like uh, Stark Industries that discovered so you have like cameos by War Machine because War Machine I guess was like the Iron Man of the 90s for a while and you know the new mutants, sorry, not new mutants. X Force feels like okay. Cyclops was our leader, and what what was his is ours, dude. So that they go, they go, they go in there to kick ass, take names, and tr and tr and try to re recover the stuff that was in there. You also have another B plot where you have the externals, which are mutant immortals that want to. By the way, here you have the Weapon Prime, which is like, holy shit, dude. Badass Kings, super villains or superheroes, depending on your... Also, Deadpool is a villain in this. So, yeah, he's not your funny-go-lucky dude. Like, he's not like, he's not Ryan Reynolds. 
uh, Deadpool. He, he's a bad guy in this, which is kind of cool. You also have a thing where, like, uh, uh, Rusty and Skids from, like, X-Factor and New Mutants are here. And they were kidnapped by the Friends of Humanity, which is another anti-mutant group. By the way, look at this panel, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. I love 90s comics, dude. I love 90s comics, dude. What the fuck is... Look at this shit, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. This was, this was, yeah. I love 90s comics, dude. Because even when the writing's not all there, you know, you got real cool and you got sex appeal, dude. And the, and the graphic novel ends with basically the Fatal, Attract, uh, Fatal Attractions crossover event. Where basically, uh, where basically, psych, uh, sorry, Cable comes back and... And, um, Magneto, Magneto has taken over Grey Malkin and wants it to be a haven for, uh, wants it to be a haven for mutants everywhere. Yeah. So this was, this was also very weird where at the beginning of like this issue... Let's see if I can find it. We get this basically. We get this basically like paragraph telling you where Cable has been and what's uh, where Cable has been, and also we get the ending for the Domino Grizzly and Hammer arc, which Hammer was like their tech guy who was paralyzed by uh, Strife or Cable. I don't. I don't fucking know, dude. So I thought this was weird. What the fuck? Was this a separate issue? Why didn't you include that in the fucking collection, dude? What the fuck? I paid almost 40 bucks for this. And yeah, that, I thought that was weird. But whatever. Uh, so what I think about this graphic novel. Obviously, lots of real cool. Uh, even though, like, a lot of these kind of, like, edgy 90s, gra like, comic books... The writing is usually weak, but usually you get lots of action, lots of real cool. Here, yeah, the the story is not that good. It's not that good, but I feel like the writing, like, it wasn't good. Like, you, you're not really getting good storytelling, but I did like, okay, it's not completely brain dead. Like, when it comes to the whole mutant versus humanity debate, the whole, like... Uh, coexistence, or do we like take over like Magneto wants, or or separate completely? You know, you have the different, the three different paths. Like, should humanity and humans live together peacefully? Do like humanity and mutants like fight over for control, or like do mutants go their separate way? Here, they kind of like you know, they take a more nuanced path, like nuanced take to that. So I thought, oh, okay, that was cool. Like, there wasn't, like... Because, like, there was the whole thing, like, where they go to rescue, like, you know, Rusty and Skids. Which I have their hero clicks, by the way. That's Rusty, that's Skids behind uh, Cyclops there. Uh, and, you know, he's like, can we really... Like, Sam Goofrey has this, like, you know, um, speech at the end where... Can we really blame humans for fearing us when we can, like, you know tear down buildings, like, the fucking sky on fire, like, you know, all that shit, <laughs> dude, so it's like, okay, they're kind of, like, waking up, it's not like, they're not doing the whole, we didn't do nothing, people just hate us because we're different, they have more nuanced path, to, you know, they, they're, they're more nuanced, they're not retarded, like, the, like, in the, like, uh, debate, you know, the eternal, mutants versus human debate like in other x-men comics so i really enjoyed that and the art was good though the backgrounds were kind of bad at times like the backgrounds if uh like dark Side's comics always mentions like oh i mean he hates empty like backgrounds and stuff yeah there's a lot of empty backgrounds here dude um uh, which is like you that's that's the thing i mostly when it comes to art i mostly like focus on like like character designs Background art is also important. I need to re I, I need to remember that. Uh, so there's that. Uh, basically, 
you're just you're basically just reading it for the art and the nine, 90s edgy like you know Marvel comics you know comics so it's uh, action, bullets and blood, babes. That's all you're pretty much going to get from this graphic novel. So if that's what you're looking for. You have that. Uh, but if you're looking for like, you know, if you're like looking for highbrow, like, you know, Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, uh, who else? I don't know. Not Peter Milligan, obviously. <laughs> you're not going to get that. Sorry, Grant Morrison would have been a good one. But Grant Morrison, I feel like, is more fun. Like, he can put out... Yeah, he can put out like comic. That's why Grant Morris is one of my is one of my is my favorite com, uh, comic book writer. Cause yeah, he can put out like the high like the the philosophical, high thinking comic books, but he can also put out fun comic books too. That's why I like Grant Morrison. So yeah, that's that's basically what you're getting is fun. So if you're looking for fun, this is good for you. But if you're not, you know, it is what it is. So our next X Men month review is going to be X Men Original Sin. Peace out. Stupid touchscreen. Seven out of ten, by the way. Oh my God! Stupid.